Welcome to the Made to Parade podcast, sponsored by the British Drum Company, manufacturers of the Phantom, Regimental Series and Axial Parade Drums that look amazing, sound amazing and feel amazing. Alrighty folks, welcome along to another episode of the Made to Parade podcast. You're joining us on episode number six of season number six and I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Phil Brown from the Netherton Road Flute Band in Scotland. Just a quick word to say that this episode is also sponsored by the Drum Chapel Red Hand Comrades Association and that sponsorship was organised by friend of the podcast Stephen McPherson, a member of Drum Chapel Protestant Boys. Stephen, thanks very much for all of your support and encouragement um, since we've um, come to know each other through the podcast. It's, it's very much appreciated, man. Thank you. So let's get into today's episode, and here's our conversation with Phil Brown. Alrighty, folks, welcome along to another episode of the Made to Pray podcast. You're joining us in ridiculously unfamiliar surroundings and a very unsteady camera here in the sense because I am actually sitting in my car and I've been trying to organize this uh, episode with, with Phil Brown from the, the Netherton for quite some time. So, folks, um, please um, excuse the shaky video, potentially excuse the quality of the audio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you need much whenever you, you're trying to get things done and uh, get get episodes sorted out here. So I'm going to bring Phil in now and uh, hope that we have enough power and internet in order to, to, to make this thing work for us. So uh, here we go. All right. Phil, absolutely brilliant to have you on the, the Me at the Pray podcast, mate. It's been a wee while us trying to get this organized. So uh, as I was saying in my intro there, excuse the, the strange surroundings for me here sitting doing this on a laptop in the car. But I, I was keen to get this done. And as I say, the show has to go on, like, doesn't it? That's it. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Uh, well, that's it. Well, it depends on who you talk to. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> well, listen, Phil, let's let's get this started, you know, and let's let's get kicked off here in regards to what we're we're here to talk about. Phil, how did you end up yeah. getting involved uh, in a band for, at first? You know, what kind of sparked your interest? Yeah, well, when I was probably about 11, just the uh, end of primary school, I had a very, very good friend called Stan Gordon. Right. Uh, and him and his family were in a band called the Richard Stewart Memorial from Blantyre. Right. And uh, I, I quite I quite like the sound of things. It means Stan were really, really friendly. So he took me up to the band practice and basically I started off learning the flute from the age of about 11. Right. Uh, and I say, I got in learning music, learning the flute, and uh, the rest is history, basically. You know, uh, mm-hmm. start, started, started playing with the Richard Stewart, stayed there till I was about maybe... 17, I played with him for about eight years, progressed okay. from playing the flute, playing the side drum, sort of played bass drum, played a kind of a all, all round bandman, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Sort of thing. Uh, and when I got into playing with the band, when I got a bit older, maybe 16, 17, 17, I got my, I got my car license and I started going to all different band practices, right. you know, Craig New Defenders, the Bottle Hoth, that's so a lot of different bands. Uh, I used to go to the other practice because I was just I really, really honed into it uh-huh. uh, and just took it for there, basically, Glenn. Get on. And I roll it back a wee bit. I mean, in terms of like going down to, to practices and, to, and learning the flute, what was that like, you know, going into a, a hall or meeting up with a band for the first time? What? What I, what I started picking up going to other different band practices and seeing the different styles that other bands played, because the Richard Stewart was like a, an old style band, you know. We uh-huh. walked to the floats at the front, the drums at the back. So uh-huh. when I, I started getting into other bands and watching other bands, you know, at that time, you'd, Craig Newt was a big band. The Payless, Bobo Hall Thistle, they were a big band. They walked to the Sutter, you know. Eight side drums across the front. Right, okay. Rope drums, lamb bag drums, you know, uh, flutes at the back. And I was kind of a honing into that style. So I tried to introduce that style to the Richard Stewart. But there was a lot of old died in the wool members. Uh-huh. And they didn't like they didn't like the 
they didn't like the thing with their kind of a younger generation try to take over the band. Right. You know, so they were kind of a stuck in their ways. But don't get me wrong, the Richard Stewart moved on and they went to drums at the front, flutes at the back, but it took a lot of convincing. Uh, and I was a very, very eager person, very eager to move forward and be better, basically, you know. Uh-huh. I wanted people at the side of the road to look at their band and say, look at them, they're brilliant, mm. you know. Yeah. And I got to, basically, I think, the end of my tether, they tried to change things in the, the Richard Stewart, uh, and I decided to move on from there because okay. things wouldn't move quick enough for me. Yeah, sure, no worries. Listen, we'll roll it back just a wee bit there in terms of what was your first parade and what are your kind of memories of walking with the bomb for the first time? Well, with Richard Stewart, we, we, we played the music, so it took me took me a good year, year and a bit, to learn music, uh, learn the flute. But we played, uh, my first parade was a, an Easter Scotland parade. Right. It's probably about maybe 12, 12 and a half at the time. Uh, just get into secondary school. But we played with feathers and you played with, with the music and, and that sort of stuff. No, old style, old yeah. style kind of uh, bands. Uh, and I remember as a young a young boy walking with a band, really, really enjoyed it. A bit overwhelming at times, you know, I'm like, oh, can, can uh-huh. I really do this, you know? Uh, quite overwhelmed because there was a, and like, the, the older members in the Richard's Fjord had a wee bit of a drinking culture, you know. Right, okay. But at that time, you, you, you couldn't get in the pub, so you were you were put on the bus with a, a can of juice and a bag of crisps, you know, <laughs> while they were in the pub getting bevied up and that sort of right, stuff. Right, okay. You know? So it was good when you started to get older and you can get in the pub with them, you know, and get a, a uh-huh. couple of beers in them and a bit of chit-chat. Brilliant, good stuff. And uh, so obviously you were saying there, you, you, you played with them for a number of years. But obviously, in terms of progression or what you were looking to achieve, whatever wasn't really happening. Where did you go after that then, and and what was that like? Right, I went to play with a I went to play with a band in Burn Bank, which is basically the next village to Blantyre. There was a, a band called Burn Bank Through Defenders. Uh, they had all the new ideas, you know. They they walked to the the eight drums at the front, big drum. They had about 20 flutes, eight side drummers. But that band didn't last long. They only lasted for uh, maybe five, six years, something right. like that. Uh, and they folded. It was just it was just like a, a new wave. All the young guys uh-huh. were all in it. it, was, it was, there wasn't very many older guys in it. It was uh, all young guys. It was a guy called Davey Robertson from Burn Bank. It started the band. Uh, the band did really well. They went to Belfast, uh, played at all the main parades. Uh, but I think younger guys when they started getting girlfriends and started doing other things they kind of fell away when the band started uh-huh. to fell away uh, the, the, the guy Davey lost interest and just sort of put an end to the band uh-huh. uh, so then I, I moved on to Netherton but for for a long time when I was playing with Burn Bank I was going to all different parades and I can always mind going to a parade in Hoyk it right. was the first ever orange demonstration in Hoyk. And I went, I went there with one of my mates just to follow the parade, to watch the parade. And uh, I seen Netherton that day. Uh-huh. And they were walking me, I think it was five or six, the silver drums, the old Royal Scots. Oh, yeah. The front, and the sun was beating down and the, the drums were glistening uh-huh. in the sun. And uh, they were playing me a rope drum with the canes. Uh, and they had the wee short red monkey jackets, and they just they just looked the bees and ease. Uh-huh. I always say to myself, that's that's a band I would love to play with. So as Burn Bank sort of came to an end, uh, I had a friend that I was partly with at school, Graham Walls, who was lead tip in Netherton. All right. And he contact he contacted me and says, How do you fancy coming to join the Netherton? I says, oh, I'd, I'd love that, and I was over the moon with that. Uh-huh. And I went to, I went, I went to join the Netherton band, but it was quite daunting because when I went to their band practice, Netherton, the they weren't a, they weren't a big band, but maybe thirteen flutes, fourteen flutes, uh-huh. five side drums. 
But when I went to join them, there was a guy called Jim Gilfillan, uh, Gilly, still a member of the band today. Uh, he actually, he took me through this back room and says, right, what can you play? And I said, well, what do you want to play? I just just play four or five tunes. So uh-huh. I played, you know, Banks of the Boing, Derry's Walls, the Sash, you know, all, all the easy stuff, uh-huh. you know. Uh, played that, he says, right, okay. I'll let the band know that you're good enough to join, but you'll need to go and play in front of the band now. So right. <laughs> 16, 16 guys standing there, I'll go to get and play the flute in front of them. Like, oh, I was quite daunting, you know. But uh-huh. hey, anyway, I went out and I played in front of guys. I said, ah, let, 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 the, let the boy in the band. So uh-huh. I got into the band and uh, I've been in the band for about oh, 41 years, something like that now. Right, okay. Right. Okay. So, it's been it's become a a lifelong kind of passion as such. Then joining an Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I've got uh, my whole sort of friendly circle uh-huh. is all people who are playing bands. Yeah, you know, brilliant. No, so obviously, you know, there, there's you, you have a long term history with with the band now, um, but. What are some of your standout kind of memories around, you know, those early days with the Netherton? You know, because obviously I always remember not running into the Netherton whenever I was over in Scotland with with Prairie to the Raven. You know, yeah. so whenever we were doing the Muller, we were we were obviously doing the Mullerwell parade. And, uh, you know, obviously still got links there today. And then obviously picking up that famous tape with uh, the yellow and red bodge on the front of it that seemed to be played at a million miles an hour and stuff. But um, talk to us a wee bit about those those early days, first parades with them, getting a the uniform on, and, um, and maybe even some funny stories that you want to share with us. Oh, well, uh, when I started playing in the Netherlands, I mean... You get the wee, we had the wee red, we had the wee red uh, short monkey jackets uh-huh. with the yellow piping, you know, and uh, I was, I was kind of overwhelmed to to play with the band because, like, Netherton were always kind of uh, held in high regard in Scotland, right? And the flute band fraternity, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, and why was that? Why do you think they were? I think, I think because. People looked at Netherland and even even if you, you see people outside the road today, or oh, they're an Irish band, because right. people will say, Nether- where's Netherland Road? You know, right. cause that's, what <laughs> that's what it says in the drum. It just says Netherland Road, you know, and people, people even to this day, are, are they, they, that band's for Ireland, you know, but in my younger times of band, everybody thought they were a sort of Belfast style band, uh-huh. you know. But when I joined the band, there was a, a, a guy called Jim Gilfillan, and I said, Gilly, uh, George Little, they're two founder members of the band. And Netherland was basically a breakaway for Craig Nook. Right, okay. They played with Craig Nook, and Netherland was a breakaway for Craig Nook. But they, they also played with a band that you'll probably know, the, the, an old band called the, the Pride of the Shankill. Yep, yep. Uh-huh. They, used to, they used to play with the Pride of the Shankill, and that's what they based Netherton Band on. They based right. Netherton Band on the old, the old Pride of the Shankle with right. the wee short red monkey jackets, uh-huh. the rope drum, you know, the five, six side drums at the front. Uh-huh. And the way, the way they played their tunes and they played with a lot of wee, wee jigs and things like that. Uh-huh. And it was, all, it was all based on that. And a lot of people, I think a lot of people looked at Netherton because they were, they were different from most of the bands in Scotland. Uh-huh. Their style was different, and I think people thought they were they're more a kind of a an Ulster type band. Aye. you know. Well, I, I, don't know I don't know if I'm right in saying that, but that's uh-huh. what I think that's my take. No worries. Well, I suppose in some senses you could think, well, if you were, you know, there's that pride of the shankle thing, because whenever you were talking, I was like, I was about to, I was going to say there, and I'm going to say it, and I was, so it wasn't the White Rock man. <laughs> so no, no, no. It, 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 the, I mean. Netherton's always had a really, really uh, close relationship with White Rock. A lot of guys in the, the Netherton are very close with, with guys in the White Rock, and we've always had a really, really close thing with the White Rock. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of good friends that play with White Rock, and you'll know them because a few of them played with the Raven, you know, Big uh-huh. Dennis, uh, Big Duper and all that. You know? uh-huh. uh, uh, Darren Buchanan, Scott Mc... 
our best drummer plays, our best drummer moved to Belfast, Scott That's McCary, true. Yeah. Belfast, lives in East Belfast, plays with White Rock. Now, Netherton and White Rock have got a real, really close affinity, but when Netherton started, Netherton were basically based on the, the old Pride of the Shankill. Okay. Is that, is, that, is that started playing with the band, I, I've got a lot of funny stories about playing with Netherton, because Netherton, because the band was quite small, and we used to go to parades, or we go in a, we go everywhere now in a big bus and people all go with us, but at the start, we bought an old ambulance. Right. And we used to go, so people would pay, like lodges in Edinburgh would play, pay for a, a bus, but we would turn up in an old ambulance. <laughs> so we bought an old, amb- an old ambulance Brilliant. and we, we were all crammed in it and used to go to parades and used to break down every week. And, uh, <laughs> And they were ferrying people back and forward in cars because the old ambulance uh-huh. had broke Oh, down. my God. And we used, we used to go, we've, got, we've been coming to Belfast for years and years and years, but we used to come in two minibuses. Uh-huh. So we had two big roof racks on minibuses, all the suitcases tied up on the top of the roof rack and <laughs> uh, drums tied up on the top and everybody's in the back drinking. And uh, a funny story, we were going to Belfast uh, one year Two minibuses, so we're belting down. So we stops at Girvan. There's no toilets in the buses, no, it's a, a lay by for the toilet. And this guy, Fudgy, the guy in the van, says to me, Phil, I've got a big bag of sannies up there. Right. He says, oh, I'll climb up the top. So I climbs up the, the top of the van because I, I, was, I was always known as Hungry Horace, always right. looking for something. <laughs> okay. So I climbs, up the, I climbs up in the top of the minibus and I'm getting into the sandwiches. But does everybody know jump in the minibus and the minibus drives away? <laughs> and I fall off, I, thought, I fall off the top of the minibus doing, a, doing an embankment. I, I'm like, I'll not be able to walk in Belfast. I think I've broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't care to, and I, you'll be all right, you know, rubbing you up and all that. Oh, you're yeah. okay, you know. But that's the way we, we went about our business. The bands, the, the bands, uh, Moved on since then, you know. Anywhere we go now, we kind of try to date the style. We've got a big bus, we bring it to Belfast, we bring the bus over with us. Anybody that follows the van, you know, uh-huh. jump the van bus sort of thing, you know. Brilliant. Uh, and the sandwiches and the sandwiches aren't on the roof anymore. <laughs> no, 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 I was I was eating the sandwiches while I was falling off. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get your priorities right, don't you, Phil? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Brilliant, brilliant. And then, did you play on the Barnes tape? Yes, yes. I talk played me th- in the Barnes two tapes. Right. Okay. So, talk me through that first tape because that one is for me. That one it has. It sounds like it's. It does sound like it's. It's user playing like the Kirkus. Obviously, you don't play at that speed no, at no, all. But no, talk, no. talk me through that because I know Tom Gray had a. A wee bit of an insight into what what happened with that that tape, but talk us through the recording and then getting that out there because those are big things. Oh well, we, we record. I, I can't actually mind when we recorded that tape on, but when when we when we did the recording and that tape, we kind of felt no, we, we battled through it fairly quickly because I thought you know you hear wee mistakes, you'll stop, you'll take take other takes and all that, but we we actually battled through that tape. Really quickly, uh-huh. but when, when I heard the when I heard the demo tape after it, I don't know whether the guy had uh, turned the, the, the speed up a wee bit or something. <laughs> like that. We don't we don't play at that speed, you know, because <laughs> when that tape when that tape get out there, everybody's like, oh, Jesus Christ, they're fast. And I says, we actually we actually don't play at that. You, you couldn't play. You couldn't play at that speed. Uh-huh. Okay? No way. No, um, definitely. I remember hearing it, and I was like, "Can I go and see if they, we're walking along anywhere near these guys? They'll be at the end of the parade before we've uh, even started. If they're walking at that pace, Glenn, we were, we were. I mean, when I joined the band, we were really slow. Uh-huh. We played really slow, but I mean, we did speed up a lot. But there's no way we played as quick as what we, we played in that tape. But a lot of people. Uh, used to say that, or uh, maybe another band would be walking ahead of us, and they would say, uh, "Use a murder to try and keep up with," uh-huh. because we did kind of a walk at a really quick pace. But I believe when you walk in Scotland, the the, the page is such stop, start, stop, start. But if you walk in Belfast, you're allowed to parade 
and you're allowed mm-hmm. to go at your own pace. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it doesn't really matter if there's there's a space because there's cars. To, there's you've got no taxis and cars take up and minibuses uh-huh. take up spaces in between. So you're allowed to you're allowed to march at your 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 own pace yeah. in Belfast. And that's how I really love doing the Belfast parade because yeah. you don't have you don't have anything in between anything in Scotland when you parade as you know yourself. You've yeah. been here and it sort of bunches up then spreads out and bunches up and spreads out and it's a bit higgledy piggledy uh-huh. compared to Belfast. You just I mean, okay, you stop in Belfast to have a wee rest for five, ten minutes, whatever, and then get going again. But once you're going, you're going, you don't stop, you just you just keep going marching. And I like that. Uh-huh. No, because I remember whenever whenever I, I did the uh, the parade a couple of times over in, in Mullerwell, I'd have been thinking because some of the bonds back then were walking at a ridiculous pace. You know, there was a real, you know, bonds were were speeding up. You know, and there was maybe a, yeah, yeah. a certain influence and all. And I remember hitting because there's that hill near the, the at, on, on that parade in, in Mullerwell, and I was like, kind of going, I take shop to walk across. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, kind of going, you would have to be, you have to be some level of fitness to be walking at that pace. Yeah. Up at hell, you know. <laughs> it killed me walking up in the Ravens' pace. I mean, the Raven don't walk that that fast. I was half dead by the time I got up there. So, <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Brilliant. Now, a good, a good friend of mine plays with the Raven, Bobby Wotherspoon. You know, Bobby. Oh, I know, I know, Spoon. All right. Aye, Bobby used to play with Netherton. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He played with Netherton for a for for quite a. Well, he played with Pride of Mother. He played with the Loyalists. New Stevenson, then uh-huh. he played with the Pride of Mother. Then he came to he came to Netherlands no, before that... he actually moved to he moved to East Belfast. Yeah, no, I, I, moved I, to Belfast. And Phil, how conscious are you of the bond progressing over the years? Because obviously you've had your stay hasn't changed that much, really, has it? No, no. Our, our styles, our styles never changed since I, I basically joined the band. It's always been the same style. Okay. We've changed tempos, we've changed uh, different tunes and things like that, but the style of the band's always been the, the same. And I'm a great believer, if it's no broke, don't fix it. Mm, yeah, yeah. And plus the fact is, what I think about Netherton is, there's very, very few people from Wisher play with the band. Uh-huh. Everybody that, that plays with our band all come from outlying areas. I mean, myself, I'm from Blantyre. Uh, there's people from Renfrew, Paisley, uh-huh. Airdrie, Drumchapel, uh, Lark Hall. Yeah, I mean, there's people from everywhere all come mm-hmm. to play with Everton. There's very, very few people from Wisher. Right. There's a really, really small percentage of people from Wisher play with the band. Everybody all come from outlying areas. Now, to me, that tells you something. They travel because they want to be in the band. Yeah, yeah. Because they probably, there's bands in their own area, they probably pass X amount of bands to come to, to Wisher to uh-huh. practice and play with the band, you know. So I think, I think we've got something where people want to be members of the band, you know. Uh-huh. Sure. And what do, you, what do you think that is then? What do you think it is that draws them to it? Is it because... You're seen as a very, you know, traditional, older style band, or or what is it that, that, that you think that draws people to you? Well, having a conversation with people on your band, I'm saying older members. I, I I'm sixty, you know, so I, I probably regarded as one of the older members in your band. Uh, what I think is a lot of the bands, pe- talking to people in your band, and they'll they'll, they'll Talk about another band and we'll say, oh, I don't like that bum bum drumming. Some of them are playing bass drums like side drums. Uh-huh. You know? Whereas we just play the single beat. And anybody you speak to in our band, they don't want to uh, they don't want to deviate for that. That's uh-huh. what they want, that's what they want to do. And anybody says they play with our band because of the style of the band. Uh-huh. You know, now the some people have left their band and joined other bands. I mean, sure. that's their prerogative to do, to do that. And fine, they maybe know, enjoy the style we do. But the people that's in our band, they're all, they're all long-time members. 
there's no there's no many people in our band that's just in for a year or two. All right, okay. Everybody's every I mean the amount of people in our band with 20, 30, 35, 40 years of experience in the sure. band is is unbelievable. Uh-huh. You know, I mean people say to me, our band's getting old, but we're an old old age band, you know, like everybody the average age of your band will be well in its fifties. And people will say to me, uh, how long can the band keep on going for if you can't get new, uh-huh. new members in? You can't get younger guys in. Now, our drum corps is quite a young drum corps. Sure. Good sections, more older, more mature, I would say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but people say to me, how long can you go for us as well? I'll keep going to my legs, can I go? Uh-huh. I mean, I'll walk until my legs will no carry me anymore. Sure. And, to me, uh, that's just all about dedication. Uh-huh. When I see other bands and I, I speak to a lot of my friends and other bands, I say, oh, we, we've got guys who come in, they'll be there for two years and they'll be away. Uh-huh. You know, I just feel the younger generation now are no dedicated to play with bands. And yeah. what I notice a lot of bands now, a lot of bands are getting smaller in numbers. Uh-huh. I mean, I was at the Apprentice Boys Parade in December in Glasgow. And I would say the average size of a band would be 10, 11 flutes and four or five side drums. Yeah. You know, I know there's a lot, there is a lot of big bands in the road, like you take Kim Lackey and Govan Broadson boys and the Pride of Govan, there's uh-huh. big bands, but a, a, a lot of your bands are kind of a smaller in size. Uh, and I just think it's the interest, I don't know if it's due to COVID or, you know, Bands know having proper band practices and people are falling away. I I I really can't put my finger on it. Yeah. I just think the younger generation have got too many other things and you know, playing with computers and doing different yeah. things. They're, 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 not been, they're not been drawn into bands. But in Belfast, I see a lot of the bands in Belfast seem to be growing tremendously. Yeah, well, it, it, I think there's a, there's a number of factors. I think COVID's definitely played its part, Phil, in regards to yeah. maybe, you know, impact around there. I think there's a lot of things in regards to, I think there's also something around patterns of work that have had an impact on bonds as well. You know, you once you get up into that, you start to work and all. I mean, it's not nine to five anymore. You know, it's all... You, the, the various shift patterns and things, you know, and I know whenever yeah. I was growing up, most people didn't work the weekends, you know, a lot, everybody was yeah. free at the weekends. And, uh, you know, that, you know, you never seemed to struggle to get a bond out. You know, I always remember never struggling to get a bond out. And then later, as I moved on later in life, you know, it became, well, I have to work or here, I need to t- I need to look after the kids, I need to do all their things. And I think there's maybe, there is a cultural difference, Phil, I think, you know, because whenever I joined a bond, I mean I, I mean, I joined a bond in early 80s, and I mean, it was the culture was, if the bond's out, you're out. Everybody's, yeah, I, everybody's I, I, out. And, and it's not that, it's, people don't have that attitude anymore. And I think that's maybe where you guys have got that in the sense that a lot of your guys are 30, 40 years in. That's the culture you grew up in. And it's very, very different for the younger generation now because that's not maybe part and parcel of their mindset. You know what I mean? And one of the other things I would say to you as well is some of the Belfast bonds are a bit like yourselves. A lot of people in Belfast bonds don't live in Belfast. Yeah. So, know you know, that. yeah. So you, you've got you've got the same thing going on. People will travel to go and be with the bond that they they want to be in. And uh I mean, at the end of the day, I think, you know, there are things that the, the bond scene's facing in regards to membership. And I think you are right. I think there does need to be a concerted effort around, you know, recruiting young people right across the board, That whether that's in Northern, here in Northern Ireland, Scotland, and even in the bonds in England, because, you know, the, the, the bond scene in England's, you know, not exactly the, the strongest, you know, the, in terms of the amount of bonds and the amount of people in bonds and stuff like that there yeah, as well. But I definitely it. think COVID's played a big part in Scotland, I think, in regards to reducing numbers and people have fallen away as, as, a, as a result of that, you know. Um, but in terms of what would you say that you've got out of being a member of a bond? You know, what, what are some of the, the key things that it's brought to your life, would you say? Uh, friendship. Right. Uh, loyalty. Uh, uh, I mean, I find that the, the, 
like my my friends that's in the band circle and in lo the lodge circle and all that, they're very loyal to each other, uh -huh. very helpful. If you need, like say, one of the one of one of the band members, Wally Blakeway, was down in my house this uh -huh. morning, and there's another band member in Peyton's house. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just it's it's that uh, it's that close knit thing. If you know somebody in a band who is a painter or an electrician and you need an ele electrical work done, you'll, uh -huh. you'll go to somebody you know. It, and I would say friendship is the biggest thing uh -huh. uh, because the amount of people I've met for other bands, people will say to me, I mean, younger people in, in my band will say to me, Phil, you know everybody. You, I mean, you uh -huh. walk into a park, he says, and everybody for all different bands all speak to you. Uh -huh. But that's just through the years they've been in the band and yeah. the friendship has flourished. Uh -huh. you know? uh, and to me, that, that's the biggest thing. I've had a lot of satisfaction at playing in the band. Uh -huh. I love I love the camaraderie, been out the band, playing with the band, going having a couple of, of beers and having a good bit of crack together. Yeah, yeah. To me... That epitomizes a really, really good day out. Uh huh. It's not for everybody, but yeah. it's for me. Sure. It's for me, you know. That's that. That's that's my take on things there. Yeah. One of the things that it, it's come across with a lot of bonds and a lot of guys that I've been talking to on the podcast is about there seems to be some standout moments that they have with their bond. That may be that there's a particular parade that they look forward to every year because of a particular reason. Um, maybe attached to that. I know I always talk about the first of July and East Belfast. Yeah. With the psalm and stuff, you know, that re that's really important. Other people talk about, you know, like the Weight Rock talk that Weight Rock parade is their parade of the year, you know. And yeah. then obviously the London Dairy Bonds, you know, with, with Dairy Day and being able to yeah. walk walls and stuff. What are some of your, you know, pivotal moments or stand out moments or things that make the, the, the her in the back of your neck stand up as and uh, that are important to you as a member of a bond? Well, one of, one of the ones that stands out for me is uh, Craig Newton's band parade. Right, okay. Uh, walking down Wisher Main Street, uh -huh. and Wisher Main Street is absolutely jam-packed. And because we're a Wisher band, it's very good to come down there because you know you know a lot of people at the side of the roads. Uh -huh. All the peoples are outside the pubs because we've got a certain pub, uh, Tam Parks, uh -huh. The band actually congregate and they have a drink in, and and when you go by Tampax, the people's out there and they're all absolutely cheering you on. And we'll uh -huh. always, we'll always, before we get to Tampax, get ourselves set up for a, a really good tune. So we're hitting Tampax and double forty, yeah. you know, and we're kind of uh, lifting the roof off the place, and uh, that sticks in my mind. Going to, going to Belfast. Uh, for the 12 parades, another another uh -huh. big one because I take a week off my work for that. And right, okay. it's, like, it's like it's like a holiday. Uh -huh. so it's I go for a couple of days before it, have the 12th. We always do the 13th in the welders. Uh -huh. uh, we have a, a day or two after it, we travel back. So I, I just make that a, a, a holiday thing. So sure. that, that sticks out for me. I, I love I love doing the 12th. You're absolutely knackered after it, Aye. and people people say the the thirteenth will get them playing the welders, and it's good because people all come to see you, and you can uh -huh. get a good blather with people, you can get a drink with people. Yeah. The social aspect it is really really good. I'm sure I've seen you in there a couple of times in the thirteenth. Uh -huh. I'm sure. No, do you know what? I was actually down last 13th. I was actually meeting up with the guys from Corby. You know the guys in Corby Loyalists? Yes, I know, I know them through big Stephen McPherson. Aye, so I was over meeting up with, with uh, Ewan uh, and Mark. Yeah. And uh, I, I couldn't stay for the whole the whole bit because I needed to go and pick the kids up and stuff. And yeah. I was like, can I go on? Because the, the 12th was quite different last year, wasn't it? I loved it, yeah, I have to say. I thought walking around East Belfast and being finished at four o'clock was amazing. <laughs> it was very good. It wasn't as tiring. 
<laughs> yeah, I know exactly. I'm not not looking forward to getting back to a, a full parade this year. To be honest with you, I'm gonna have to hit the treadmill and make sure I'm ready for it. You know, get yourself out did some exercise. I uh, definitely, man. I think there's gonna be a few of us are gonna be at that. Like you know, um, I was kind of. I've been on a lot of the episodes talking with people and going. If, you've, if there's anybody there from the Grand Orange Lodge listening to this, any chance that we can just do the walk out and finish it, uh, finish at Shaw's Bridge, and then we can do a wee local parade to finish off with, so that we don't have to do that with third leg. <laughs> That'd be the best of both worlds, wouldn't it? It would, it would be. Sort of, but the, you're never, you're never going to get that traditional roots and all that kind of thing. I think you know it'll be one of those things. But the, well, you know, when you do the twelfth. I mean, you're sat up at six o'clock in the morning, you're getting yourself ready, and the guys are hung over for the night before because they've been travelling travelling over to Scotland and they've had a, a bit too much juice. Uh, you do the parade, but by the time you get back to East Belfast tonight, it's sat at seven, half past seven. Yeah. People saying, Oh, do you fancy a couple of beers? No, no, I just really fancy my bed now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then there was, there was a couple of years, I remember the year, a couple of years back there. Where the I, I don't think I get in fr- I don't think we finished praying up the Tampa Avenue until about about I was off their name one year. Yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. just like kind of going, listen, I see from being out from six, seven o'clock in the morning and you're not coming back until nine at night. It's yeah. as much as I love the twelfth, that's the only thing that I don't I don't like about it is the fact that see at the end of it, I actually go away going, I don't know whether I fully enjoyed that prayer or not, because I am absolutely wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I, I, I think uh, I think most people are like that uh, because it, it really knocks it knocks the stuff in at you. Yeah. Uh, but it's it, it's all about all the upholding your traditions, basically. There's you know, no, that's it's, the thing. If you let that go, if you let that go, I think it's a downward spiral. Yeah. No, because I've... in Scotland. We seem to be getting, you know, if you're having a parade, you're walking in back streets, you're not walking in main streets anymore. Yeah, yeah. They seem to be pushing you back, pushing you back, and pushing you back. I know, and you need to do, and, and I do, I, I mean, I suppose a jest in terms of, you know, but I think from just a physical point of view, it's, you know, last year was amazing. But in terms of that traditional point of view, you know, we do need to keep it because there is obviously concerted efforts in terms of targeting specific parts of the route, especially I know this year that there's going to be a part of Malone that will be targeted in regards that we think that there might be a protest and stuff there yeah, um, and yeah. so on. So, it's, yeah, definitely we need to keep, you know, that that alive in regards to, you know, this has been the way that we've been doing this for, you know, God knows how many years in regards to that. Yeah, exactly. You just have to look at that. You just have to look at the tour of the North and the White Rock Parade. You know, obviously demographics play a major part in that, but those mm-hmm. parades aren't the same as they used to be. You know, they don't have the same pool for bonds and they're not allowed to have the same amount of bonds and all this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, it is one of it is one of those things. So in terms of the bond this year, what have you got coming up for you? What 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 does the year ahead look like for you? Oh, well, we've already been, we've already sort of played it sort of from January uh-huh. to the now. We've already played about nine engagements. Right, okay. We, we've bought a new set of drums this year. Right. And uh, we're just doing a lot of extra things to, to get the money. But uh-huh. to, to, to purchase the drums. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of extra uh, this Saturday, this Saturday off, we're out next Saturday again. We're out the Saturday after that. Uh-huh. And we, we've got a really sort of full calendar. Every every main parade in in Scotland, we do it. You know, yeah, okay. whether it be Orange, Apprentice Boys, Blacks, sure. we do all the parades. We'll be over for the twelve. So, I mean, we have got a really hectic calendar this year. Uh-huh. Uh, there's no, there's not many weekends that we'll not be doing something as a band. Right, okay. And is some of that partly fundraising in, like you're saying, or to help you out? Yes, well, the last the last uh, the last two months it's been like we've been doing social clubs, we've been doing like uh, if Rangers fo- football events, like uh, no, if a Rangers football uh, a Rangers football supporters club is having uh-huh. a dance, we'll go and do entertainment for it. You've got right. a, a small donation plus uh, maybe a tray or something like that, so you can uh-huh. you can make a few hundred quid and Everything that we make, 
goes towards our drum fund. You know sure. what I mean? It's yeah. just just about getting in as much money as we can possibly get in at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Mo- moving forward, there's not a lot of like doing clubs and that. A lot of the stuff moving forward is a uh, sort of orange parades, or uh, apprentice boys parades, uh, different things like that. Which 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 all pay. So everything goes towards getting the new drums. Right, okay. And what drums he's going for? What have he's got? Uh, I don't actually know the name of the drums, but it, it's it's one that Jim Kilpatrick's doing. I can't mind. I can't mind the name of them. Look, we've, we've got them and they're designed. They've got the uh-huh. the motifs on the front and all that sort of stuff. But is that the, I don't. I don't is that the British that drum? Is that the British drum company ones? That's a that's a yeah. It's a kind of um military style one. Yeah, the RS ones. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's the ones. That's Brilliant. the ones. Excellent. Well, you, you'll know we're sponsored by we're sponsored by British Drum Company. Um, so the podcast, yeah, yeah, British the, the British Drum Company sponsor the podcast. Um, oh, so Stu good. Warmington is a guy that as actual Marine um, helped design those drums, the RS yeah. ones, and there's a lot of bonds have been been picking those up there. So it's good for me to hear. Oh, you, you, you actually have a you, bond here. You can or, let him know the Netherlands playing with them now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm sure he's probably aware of it because I think there's a few bonds of are taking them up and um, I know that we're looking to get maybe some of the blood and thunder bonds to pick up their their axial drum you know the the high tension drum but yeah cool. well, well we, we had the dantes and we've, we've moved off the dantes I mean we've sold our, we've sold our other drums we've moved on to these drums uh-huh. uh, I've only heard the band playing with them once uh, and to me I think it actually complements our bass drum more yeah the, the I- style of the drum I think it complements the yeah. rope drum more. Yeah, I think uh, you're right because it's. We had this conversation with uh, the, with Thomas McAllister from the White Rock. Now they're still using yes. the, they're still using the old they're Royal Scots. The, they're still using the old Royal Scots. Yep, that's right. But what you have is what we were talking about there. What you have is a balance of sound. You've got your bass, your mid, and your treb with the you because know, yeah. you don't play high in the register either. These are you know. You're not squeaking yeah. the flutes and stuff. So yeah. what you will find is these drums are set in a way that will do exactly what you're talking about. It'll complement the sound of the bond. It'll give you a real lift. Well, well what, what? I mean, see, I've, I've only heard them once, Glenn, right? Because uh-huh. we've just got them, basically. Uh, and I, I'm saying, I've had a conversation with, with Wally the day, uh-huh. and I'm saying, what do you think? He says, he said, I think the drums are a lot louder. Yeah, and we're all drums. Yeah, and he says I think it complements the bass drum a lot more. You know, it's, there's a lot more lift here. Yeah, no, so I can. Hopefully, we'll find out shortly when we're when we're out right with them. No, yeah. no, I so, I think you will. I think as well. Uh, it, it it is. They're 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 good drums, and I'm not just saying that just because these guys, you know, far few pound my way, but uh, no, they're, they're they're great drums, and a lot of bonds here are picking them up. You know, so like a Ball and Ron, I've got them. The uh, Song Memorial have got them. Omar Palace's place. I, I, I watched a video of the Song Memorial, and the thing that I picked up on was the drum core. Yeah. The sound off the drums. Yeah. And it was one of the guys. I, I mean, I didn't know what drums they were going, but uh-huh. it was one of the guys in, in our, the band said to me, "That's the drums we're getting." Yeah. Said, oh, they they look really good and really. They, 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 they're a very good wee band, them. Very yeah, good. they're not a bad band at all. We've been trying to get them on the podcast for about three seasons now, so uh, we can't <laughs> seem to... We, but like us, we can't seem to get a date um, <laughs> that suits people. Um, uh, Phil, I'm just conscious that uh, in terms... And I hate doing this here, but my battery on this, the laptop is at about 5% and stuff, so I want to get a couple cool. of other bits and pieces in. Yeah. In terms of what your bond does, and does your bond do any work in regards to giving out the charity or doing some kind of any level of charitable work? Yeah, we, we've, we've done quite a lot of charity things over the years. I mean, uh, you know Mother of Lawn Trolls closed yeah. now? Well, there was a time there where they were trying to get funds for Mother of Lawn Troll. Uh, we've done a few events for that to, to, to raise cash. Not for us, for the hall. Sure. Uh, the, the, there was a lady died in Mother of Lawn we, we, we did we've done things to raise money for a funeral and uh-huh. there was a big guy who used to do a lot of stuff for you maybe know this guy a guy called Scott Payton Scott Payton familiar, was yeah. a, a singer with the Blue Notes yeah, oh, okay, yeah. well 
Scott had problem with his pancreas, and he, he, he did a lot of stuff for the pancreatic unit. Right. And I was very friendly with Scott, and our band did a lot of stuff for, for Scott, for uh-huh. the pancreatic unit. So that's what we've done to sort of help charities and things like that. Uh, we, we mostly do these things, and we don't charge any fee or anything, sure. like that. and anything that's made goes to the, goes to the charity. Yeah, why do you think it's important uh, for bonds to do that? Do you think? Well, I think it it, it, it puts you in a good light mm-hmm. with with people outside the the sort of the band orange culture fraternity. Sure. People outside that, if they, I mean, it's like the patriotic thing. Uh, all the nurses and the doctors turned up one night and they couldn't uh-huh. believe that we turned up to play there for nothing and raise funds and all that. So it. It puts the band culture in a, a good place mm-hmm. because if you speak to other people who are, are known the band culture and all that, you just think you're just a bunch of bigots. Yeah, yeah. But but we're not because we've got a heart as well. Uh-huh. You know, uh, we'll, we'll go that extra mile to do things uh, yeah. to help other people. Uh, we're not just all raving. I mean... People get the, the feeling that we're all just drunkards. There might uh-huh. be people walking at the side of the road drunkards, but you'll not see many be- bandsmen going right. off the side of the pavement. It's falling onto the side of the pavement and that. I mean, because they might have seen that maybe 40, 50 years ago, but no, nowadays. Yeah, no, no, bands, definitely not. Bands decorum have certainly raced through the roof. Yeah, no, definitely. I think you're right there because I know a lot of bonds have got rules around, you know, being if you're drunk on parade that you're not walking. Oh, you know, I mean, we, we, we wouldn't tolerate that. Yeah, no, and I we think there's a lot of bonds that would be the same. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure there is. Uh, and as I say, it just, it just puts, it puts, it puts, it puts the bands in a good light with people that's not involved in any organization and they say, well, these guys are actually quite decent guys. Uh-huh. I mean, they're coming out here, they're raising money for this, raising money for that, and it certainly puts us in, in, in better light, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, definitely. I think yeah, I think that that kind of thing, what you're talking about, there is really a, a whole connection with the podcast. It's all about as well. It's about you need to see people in bonds as people and engage and begin some level of a relationship or a conversation with people to find out what they're really like. And don't base it on what you've heard. Don't base it on what you think you might know. Why don't you talk to us and find out what we're really what we're really like, and then you'll get a very very different picture. And I think that that's something that comes across a lot. When people actually engage with us and find out what we do, the amount of charity work that goes on, the amount of great things that bonds are involved in, it changes the narrative quite quickly for people like, oh, I had no clue that that was the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I People don't know. Yeah, it, so... Because they listen to other people and who have got maybe grievances against what we do. Uh, but to actually see it for themselves, what they do, it, it, it serves... Uh, it, it sort of sets us up a good a good standing. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Well, listen, Phil. What I want, I'm going to do. I'm just conscious. I'm looking at my battery here, and I'm going. Yes. This is going no to problem. go here. What I'd love to do is because I'd love to have got into some of the history of the band. You know how long you've been there, maybe some of that kind of stuff. Maybe what we could do is we can organise a, a follow up to this. And we'll give no you a, give you a second crack at you know talking about other stuff as well because no we're only we're only really scratching the surface of a conversation here. Oh, oh I don't, de- definitely. You know definitely. what I mean? And because there's loads of stuff I wanted to get into in regards to the bond's repertoire. All we started to touch a wee bit on it with the drums and sound and all that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Because the other thing is my, my big thing around uh, with having some of that haven't had the white rock and drum chapel on as they kind of going if you guys are actually over here for the centenary parade in may i want to see a moss bond i want to see <laughs> your bonds join together <laughs> I've, I've, I've watched I've watched all the podcasts and I've watched Big Steven and I've watched Tom McAllister doing it and uh-huh. and I know you've got a big thing about the, <laughs> the, the White Rock the Drum Chapel Netherton the county and getting together put it this way we're not going to get blue off the road <laughs> <laughs> I just think it would be amazing Phil I think it would be one of the you're, highlights you're, of the year like, you're, you're talking about you're talking about four powerful bands here 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I just think it would be great. So I'm hoping to have the county on this season as well. I'm hoping that it because I'll I mean I'll, I'll have hit a whole four bonds. But I know that I think a county are definitely over for the, the centenary parade. I know drum chapel are definitely I'm gonna yeah, go. I'm yeah, I think drum chapel are coming. You you guys yeah. doing that you're doing the the, the centenary are you? No, 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 no. But there's a lot of a lot of our guys have gone over to watch it. Right, okay, dead on. Well, maybe we're not going to get, maybe we'll get a few of them together in regards to that there, but I still, <laughs> I, that's one of my, that's going to be, see before I pop my clogs, I got no four, uh, getting those four bonds to walk together, either one off to the other in a parade, or joining up as some kind of moss bond, I think would absolutely be amazing. <laughs> I'm sure you. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, and everybody in Belfast would enjoy it. Oh, I think they would. I think it would be an absolute standout moment, you know. But listen, yeah. Phil, just for now, um, I just want to say thanks very much for taking the time out to be on the podcast. I mean, I really appreciate it. And Netherton's a bond that I love, and I think people know that I, that I love the bond. And, uh, you know, and absolutely, I'm delighted to, to have the bond represented on, on the podcast yeah. and stuff. So, man, let's, let's get another date sorted out. Let's have another That's conversation. And uh, let, let's continue on talking, because uh, this has been absolutely brilliant, man. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me, Glenn. No worries, man. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Phil. Absolutely delighted to have been able to get a conversation with him. And, uh, you know, as I say, it was one of those conversations where I just didn't want at the end. And uh, given the the power situation with the laptop, etc., etc., I I had to call it to a halt early. So I'm going to try and get another conversation with Phil um, as part of this this season and, you know, make make that happen. The next episode will find us in conversation with the Saracen flute band. Make sure you check that out. And then we'll have a few others lined up as well um, to end the, the season off. So, folks, make sure you check those out. So, until the next time, look after yourselves and take it easy. You have been listening to the Made to Parade podcast, sponsored by the British Drum Company, where Phantom, Regimental Series and Axial Parade Drums are hand-built in the UK to look amazing, sound amazing and feel amazing.